bookworms. Today I'm going to be doing my top 10 fantasy and sci-fi books of 2018 video for you. I always wait until the very end of the year to film this video because I'm always so nervous that I will end up reading a book within the last couple of days of December and it'll end up being a favorite and I won't be able to include it if I've already pre-filmed. I just get very stressed about it. So I always wait until the very, very, very last minute to film them, which is why this is coming to you a little bit late, a little bit after most people have already posted theirs. But anyway, without further ado, I'm going to tell you guys what my favorite books were in 2018. So the first book on this list, which will probably come as no surprise to anyone, is Kingdom of Ash by Sarah J Maas. I have invested so much of my life into the series and this series ender was like everything that I wanted for these characters, for this world. It made me so happy made me very sad. It was really bittersweet because like I said, I've invested so much of my time into this world and I was so excited to see the way that everything wrapped up, but I was also sad to leave these characters behind. So it was like a very bittersweet ending for me. There were so many moments in this that just like touched on so many of my emotions. Like I said, I cried so much. I really, really loved it. And I thought that this was just like, the perfect finale. I had been very nervous after reading A Court of Wings and Ruin because that was not a great series ender in my opinion, but I think that this just like so far ex exceeded my expectations and I was so pleased with the way that everything wrapped up. So this was for sure one of the best books that I read and it was also the longest book that I read in 2018. Next on my list is an adult fantasy novel and that is Uprooted by Naomi Novik. I fell completely in love with Naomi's writing. This was the first book of hers that I have ever read but I am so very excited to read Spinning Silver in the coming year. I really really loved this book. I really loved this story. It follows a girl who lives in this town and there is a wizard that lives there. His name is the dragon. But the writing in it is just so beautiful and he picks a girl from the village every like 10 years I believe. That girl becomes his apprentice and that is like the town basically sacrifices this girl to him and that is the deal for him to keep their village safe from the danger that lurks in the woods like right outside. It was so good. Like I said, it was just like the writing style really that did it for me. I thought it was so beautifully written. It's very dense, so it took me a quite a long time to read. I read it in July, which is my birthday month, and I loved it very, very much. It was also the first time that I ever read a fantasy novel and felt like major Dungeons and Dragons vibes from it. When they're discussing magic, the dragon is kind of criticizing our main character because he's saying like she can't even get a simple cantrip down. And I've not heard the word cantrip besides used in Dungeons and Dragons. So that also got me really excited as I was reading because I just felt like there was like this very old fantasy feel to it. It was just so beautifully written and it just made me so happy and I really, really loved it. It ended up definitely being a new favorite of mine. Next on my list is Muse of Nightmares by Lainey Taylor. This was another series ender and I am so glad that I read this one right when it came out. It was so beautiful and I just feel like overall this is such a unique fantasy series. As I said in my wrap up for both Strange the Dreamer and for Muse of Nightmares, it's very interesting because it takes place within a fantastical type setting but it's one of the only fantasy novels that I've read where there isn't like this major struggle between good and evil. There are definitely two sides to this story and each side has their own reasons for doing what they did but they also have their own flaws and faults and it's about these two sides like really needing to come together and work with each other to make things right instead of like trying to overcome an evil. That to me was just so unique. Also Lainey's writing is just absolutely incredible. I think the amount of like quotations that I highlighted within this book, probably more than like almost anything that I did for the year. I really, really loved it. Such a great ending. First book really focused a lot on Laszlo and then the second book really focused much more on Sarai. And I just love the way that everything came together. I love the Easter eggs to other series and it just was so good. Like this was obviously on this list because yeah, 
it is for sure a favorite. Next on my list is Legendary by Stephanie Garber. This is the follow-up novel to Caraval, and I really, really enjoyed this one even more so than I loved Caraval because I did love that first book, but this one just like was so much better and I couldn't believe it as I was reading it. There was a whole other story element that Stephanie brought into this book and there was this deck of cards of the fates and that just totally intrigued me and I am so excited for the third and final book finale. I can't even tell you. I really loved this like way more than I was expecting to. This is one that I definitely foresee myself rereading again in the future because it was that enjoyable. I also really enjoyed the narrator in this book a lot more than the narrator of the first book. So that was a pleasant surprise. But we finally got some answers in here and the third book is not going to have a Caraval in it. It's just going to take place like right after what happens in here. So I'm really curious how that's going to go. But this was definitely a favorite for me. Next on my list is Thunderhead by Neil Schusterman. This is one that I also really ended up enjoying. I loved the first book, Scythe, and the second one just totally like upped all of the stakes and the way that it ended, I was pretty much dying and I really cannot wait for the third book. I'm sad that we haven't gotten a cover or anything yet because the last two both came out in January of like the year that they debuted. So I was really hoping the third one would come out in January, but so far there's not even a release date. So I'm like holding out hope that we'll get it in 2018. It follows two characters named Rowan and Citra. I'm sure that you've heard a ton about this story, but they are both scythes. So they live in this world where humans have over overcome death and the only way to die is to have a scythe actually glean you, which is like the final way of killing. The philosophy in this book is really what makes it a standout for me. I really like the journal entries that the different scythes write. I really like that each of them has their own. There's like a set of rules for the scythes, but everyone interprets them differently. So it's a really interesting take on government and people in power and the way that rules can be bent and molded to fit your own means. This one, like I said, totally just up the stakes. I'm so excited for the third one. And I really, this is like a forever favorite series of mine now. Next on my list was a total surprise to me, and that is Nevermore by Jessica Townsend. I read this book toward the beginning of the year, and it is a middle grade story. I'm sure that you have heard a ton of people talk about it on booktube at this point. The fact that it gives people the same feelings they felt when they read Harry Potter was also true for me, but I just really love our main character, Mog, and I particularly love Jupiter North, who is the man that takes her away into this different world, and he owns this hotel called the Decalion, and and I just love the cast of characters there. I love the different trials that Morgan had to go through in order to enter into the Wondrous Society. I also read Wondersmith this year and I love that just as much as I loved Nevermore, but I think I liked the first one a little bit better, which is why this is the one that I'm holding up for this list. It was really just magical and so innocent and like just everything that I love. It was just so Good. And if you haven't read this, I highly suggest doing so. It is really worth it, especially if you don't read middle grade. I would urge you to read outside of your comfort zone just to pick this story up because it is so worth the read. I can't wait for the third book. I'm really hoping that this is going to be a very long running series. The next book on my list is Queen of Air and Darkness by Cassandra Clare. This was the final book in the Dark Artifices trilogy and I really enjoyed it. It wrapped things up very nicely. It was definitely like out there and not at all what I was expecting. It definitely took some chances that kind of delved into the fan fiction realm, which was quite shocking. I really enjoyed it. I really loved these characters. If it weren't for the Blackthorn family and like my Infernal Devices people. I definitely wouldn't have liked it as much as I did story-wise, but because I have such a deep love for the characters, it worked for me. I thought it was really enjoyable, and I love like that there's so much legacy behind the names that everyone has, and yeah, it's just like, it's so worth it to read it, and it, you really do have to read everything that comes before it in order for it to have the same impact, because you need that history to understand why certain things are so important. It was definitely not my favorite of Cassandra Clare's books that I've ever read, but I still did really enjoy it and I thought it was a good way to wrap up the series. Now we're getting into my top three books 
of the year. I'm very excited to share them with you guys. I guess if I'm counting down from the top three. So number three on my list is The Last Unicorn by Peter S. Beagle. I listened to this book for the first time this year on audio. I am definitely planning on rereading it physically at some point, probably in 2019, because I really did love the story that much. I have read the graphic novel version of it, but it was just so beautiful. So it follows a unicorn who is the last of her kind, and she decides to venture out of the enchanted forest that she lives in to see if she can find any other unicorns within the world and it's just like so beautifully written and it's so sad because she is the last one of her species that is around and there are so many people that are hunting for her but she meets two companions along the way there is a magician named Schmendrick who is not good at magic at all but he's quite funny and then we also meet Molly Grew and the three of them travel out together to the three of them all venture out together to King Haggard's castle in order to see if they can help this unicorn find more unicorns. It's just such a great story. Like it's such an epic fantasy. It's such a classic and I really, really loved it. I'm so glad that I read it this year. Number two on my list, I can't seem to find my ARC copy for, but that is The Wicked King by Holly Black. As you guys know, this is one of my all-time favorite series ever, and I love it so much. The second installment was just as good to me as The Cruel Prince. I really like that we got to explore a lot more of the world that Holly built. I love the character cameos that we get from her other series. I just, I love Jude and I love Cardin as characters. I know a lot of people tend not to like Jude because she's not like a likable character, but she's one of my favorite heroines within YA. I think that she is so interesting and I love the way that she's constantly trying to play the game of the Fae. I believe I said this in my review, but the reason that I love this book and just love this series so much is because it feels like a very long game of chess. There's a lot of planning, there's so much strategy that has gone into it, and I just can't wait to see how everything is going to play out in the final book. I, I'm someone that loves board games and I love Dungeons and Dragons so to be able to see that in the story is something that just like really appeals to me on so many levels so I think that's why I have such an affinity for the series and I just love Faye it really holds a very special place in my heart and like I said I just cannot wait for that third book to find out how everything's gonna end <laughs> and finally I can't believe that I'm gonna say this but my favorite book of the year out of all of those amazing books that I read. My favorite of the year is actually The Shadow of the Fox by Julie Kagawa. I love this book so much as you might have seen in my December wrap up because I'm pretty sure that I went on a minutes long rave about how much I love this book and I cannot wait to see what's going to come next within this world. If you like Japanese culture or anime or anything within that realm, this is a must read for you. I I saw everything so clearly. I wish that this book would be turned into an anime. It is just like old Japanese fantasy at its finest. So many elements of it were just like mind-blowingly spectacular. There's like no other way to describe it. It's just honestly the best. I was so invested in our main characters. I was so invested in the story and this legend of this dragon. I love all of like the mystical beings and different things that were just happening within here. And it has my favorite trope ever where there's like a party member that is going out to complete a quest and just like picks up more and more people along their way. That is just one of my favorite things ever. So I love that we get to meet new people. Whereas like a lot of times in um, Western fiction, you meet all of the main characters, like usually kind of at once. But in a lot of Japanese stories, you gradually get to know the characters and I think that it's like such a great way to introduce people and to get more of a connection to them and it's like more true to real life too because you don't meet the most important people in your life all at once. As you grow and as you learn you kind of meet new people and find new people that mean a lot to you so oh my gosh I just love it. I am so obsessed with this book, I'm so obsessed with this series and I'm so excited for the next one. I can't wait to read it again. I love it so much. It's the world building is amazing. The characters are amazing. Everything about this book is amazing. <laughs> Honestly, like, just please read this. You will not be disappointed. It is it was spectacular. So those are my top 10 fantasy and sci-fi books that I read in 2018. There's actually only one on that list that was sci-fi and that was Thunderhead. It was a very 
fantasy heavy year for me. But I really loved all of these books. There were so many series enders, so there was a lot of like saying goodbye. But I'm so glad that my favorite book ended up being A New Beginning, and that is the shadow of the fox. So let me know if you've read any of the books that I talked about. Let me know what some of your top fantasy reads for the year were, and I will see you guys soon in a new video. Bye!